Hello everybody. Next up is a trio of Stanley number 130 double end block planes. Let's take a look at them. And at first glance they look like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Got all three of them here. If you watched my last video I told you I only had one more plane. I lied. I dug into the pile and dug a few more block planes out. So let's get a look at both sides and the bottoms. The biggest, most obvious thing that jumps out is that one on the back side right there. Missing the piece of the base. Let's break them down. So we've got quite the range of age on these uh, 130s. I got a V logo with the oldest and a regular Stanley Modern logo is the newest and a sweetheart. So they go from the early 1900s all the way to probably the 1940s. The sweetheart being in the middle about 1925. There's a look at them. There's all the parts. It's time to get busy and clean them up. So the bottoms caps are going to head to the deep sink for a good scrubbing. Simple green and a scrub brush. With the deep sink done, now I know what I've got as far as japanning goes. The bottoms, I like the japanning on all three of them. It does not need to be redone. Maybe a little touch up here and there. Those uh, tightening knobs, the one on the right is good. The two on the left I'm going to redo. Same with the caps, the one on the right is good. The two on the left redo. And it's the tops only because the bottoms of all three look good. And there's a look at the bottoms. And I forgot to mention that I pulled those pins out of the bottoms they are used to hold the, the cap in place. Run across from one side to the other. You can see the holes now where they used to be. Makes it easier to work on them. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, take this broken end right here and shape it up so it's more like a chisel plane instead of this uh, mess that it is right now. So I reshaped the end so it can work like a chisel plane. And I used some uh, 3 out steel wool and my sanding stick. This is just a piece of wood with some 150 grit glued to it. That stick was used to clean up the machine surfaces, these flat places right here. And then steel wool over all of the japanning. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the japanning. It was originally here and as you can see most of that is gone. So that's where I'm going to do a touch up is around those edges and anywhere else where there's small bits of japanning missing. But that's going to come off and then I'm going to uh, work on the sides and the bottoms. So there's the upper edges after the 150 has removed the remaining specks of japanning that were there. They're prepped for a touch up. The sides and bottom look pretty good. They've got some surface rust on them. But I want to see if I can retain the patina so I'm going to use my scraper to remove that rust. It's a box knife blade with a burr on it. So the sides and bottoms have been scraped. When I do that I'm, I'm using just the edge. I hold my scraper at an angle like this while I'm scraping. Trying to keep the patina even. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a worn piece of 150 grit paper on the sides and bottom. I'm going to use an old uh, spun sanding block, there it is, steel wool and 3000 grit. And that should finish them up and leave some patina. So well, let's see what happens. This is what they look like after the 150. You work the paper and apply pressure where you need to apply pressure in order to even out the patina. And there's a look at the other side. Next is the sanding sponge. So the same thing with the sponge. Went over them, didn't take long, maybe 30 seconds on each one. And just smoothing them up and evening that patina out just a little bit more. And now I'm going to hit them with the 3000 grit paper. And that's it. All the sanding was done front to back in the same direction as the original machine marks. Otherwise you're going to mess it up. And here's a quick look at the bottoms. And now it's on to touching up the japanning. So these top edges that you see that are shiny silver were originally painted black. And you can see some loss right there around the top edge. 
those are the kind of spots I'm going to touch up. And there's how they look with the first coat of the Japaning touch up applied. You can see where it's been done because it's shiny. Probably going to take about three coats and then we'll see what's next. Now I'm going to uh, scrape and sandblast the old finish off of these. I don't want to use my favorite stripper because one, she's very expensive and two, I don't want to ruin the japanning on the underside. Scraped and ready for the sandblaster. Caps are blasted, wire wheeled and ready for paint. And for that there's no place better than my O'Shucks approved paint booth. And apply the first coat of paint. I sponge sanded the knobs and steel wooled them and I've applied two coats of lacquer so far and two coats of the finish on the caps. Then I 3 aught steel wooled the other cap that had good japanning to prep it for my dirty oil. Finished the third coat on the touch up japanning of the bases and now it's on to the irons. And a couple minutes work with my scraper revealed the two irons on the right have uh, patina that I'm going to try to maintain. The one on the left is the Sweetheart iron. It's in really nice shape. It looks almost new. So the next step is I'm going to use some 150 grit on my rubber sanding block. See if I can even out the patina and clean up that uh, Sweetheart iron. And the iron's cleaned up pretty good. From the uh, youngest on the left to the oldest on the right. And the tools used to do it, 150 grit, 3000 grit, first thing was a good scraping. And there's a look at the back side, next thing to do to these irons is sharpen them. The video I just did on the number 19's, I went into detail how to clean and sharpen the irons. So the 130's are coming along just fine. The irons are sharpened to a razor edge. There's a look at the business side of them and a look at the back side of the three irons. Caps are ready for dirty oil. The original one that hasn't had the japanning redone is on the right. The other two are on the left. The knobs, three coats of lacquer, a uh, little steel wool. They're ready for wax. Bases, I steel wool over top of the touch up japanning. Just to dull it a little bit, ready for dirty oil. And the pins that go across to hold the cap are done, ready to go. So it's on to the dirty oil. And here's another look at the parts after I've worked the dirty oil into every nook and cranny. So after this it's going to get wiped off, a uh, coat of wax, and these beautiful number 130's are going to be ready to go back together. And here's all the parts all ready to go back together. The caps came out just beautiful. The one on the right was the original Japanning. The two on the left are the ones that I've redone. Irons. Everything's been waxed. The bottoms look really good. So let's put them back together. And just like magic, we got three more beautiful planes. Stanley number 130's double end block planes. Let's check them out from all angles before we do a test drive. And here's a look at the bottoms and the sides. Not a whole lot to complain about with these old beauties. Let's see what they can do. First up is the oldest 130, it's the one with the V logo. It's looking just fine. This old beauty's producing some nice shavings. Hope I can work like this when I'm a hundred years old. That passes the test. On to the next one. Next up is the Sweetheart, Stanley number 130. And just like the older brother, 
It's working fine. Making lots of shavings in my old workshop. And the nearly 100 year old sweetheart lives up to its name. That's another one passes the test. Next up is the newest of the three. Another performer. And the And it's the third plane that passed the test. Let's move on and uh, see how they work from the other end. Flip the iron around in the old one, which is the V logo, and we're going to test it out from the other end. Just like the first side, it does not fail to impress. Fine job. And this one also has a resounding pass. Next one up is the sweetheart. And it's doing a fine job. Yeah, we're making shavings. And that makes another plane that passes the test. On the last one. It takes a little practice getting the iron set where you want it. And how to use it. But as you can see right here, it will work. Especially if you're trying to get that iron right in close to the edge of something. I can gouge the edges right out nice. But that's not the purpose. It's really more fine work. Clearly not as good as uh, I think it's the number 97. The chisel planes, the ones made for this kind of work, but it is functional. And there they're all done, tested. Three really nice Stanley number 130s. I would not modify one to be a uh, chisel plane because they just don't perform as well as the ones that were designed to do that. But it is functional. All three of them will make excellent users for somebody. So another fine project completed. The three Stanley 130s are looking beautiful and are ready to go on eBay in the month of June, which is coming up really quick. And that means that the drawing for my uh, free Stanley number three is also coming up really quick. So stay tuned. I'll be doing a video of that to see who wins and contact you through the YouTube listings. So hope you enjoyed this video. Gotta go. Time for supper. Bye.